Now hang on. Before the video starts, over 80% of people who watch our videos are not subscribed. So, if you enjoy our content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Go on, do it now. Hey guys, it's Taylor here from Adreno Spearfishing and today we're going to be going through the basics of hunting fish. So now we're going to go through a few of the basics of chasing different species. Now there's quite a few different ways, obviously depending on whether you're diving inshore, estuaries uh, or out in the reef chasing pelagic fish. Now there's a few different things that I think we can go through that will really make sure that you know, you're able to get the upper hand on some species. Um, so for me, the first one is actually you, you, how your body language is on the surface. Whether you're chasing estuary fish, pelagics, or just chasing reef fish, um, the way that you're, you're act, interacting with you know, uh, your duck dive, your equipment while you're on the surface can mean a big thing. Um, everything from clearing your snorkel. For me, I'm a, I really like to you know, spit my snorkel, turn my snorkel upside down to clear it. That way I'm not making any of those harsh noises of clearing my snorkel. Species like snapper, jobfish, you know, you can really can spook them even if you're in 30 meters of water and you're on the surface. So for me, um, when you're hanging around on the surface, try not to be rub rubbing your, or rattling your gun as much. Um, try not to be clearing the snorkel, coughing, anything like that. I usually like, as I said, like to get my head above the surface and do any action that I need to there. Um, from there, again, on the surface, the way that you're duck diving, um, you can really make a lot of noise while you're duck diving. That really can scare anything at any depth. Um, so making sure that you don't actually start kicking until you've gone through your whole action. When you've gone through, you've done your first pull from your duck dive. You wanna make sure that even the tips of your fins are just about underwater before you start kicking and making lots of noise. Um, I find that with that, if you're having on the surface, floundering around, you can really be seen, oh, you can really be heard uh, from a long way away. Um, from there, you know, I also, on my, on my descent, I really like to keep my chin tucked down. Um, obviously there's, for your actual dive, it'll make wonders uh, in your actual dive and your comfort. You're not stressing your neck. But if you're also looking around, preempting where fish are going to be, you know, as soon as some species see your eyes, that's, that's them gone. Um, so a big thing for me is very quiet on the surface, very quiet duck dive. And then you're wanting to streamline get down to the, really tuck your chin in and focus on getting to the bottom first before worrying too much about chasing a fish. Now for me, again, depending on what depth that you're in, uh, I, like, I really like to chase most of my species from the bottom for, in a comfortable position on the, on the reef. Um, that's gonna change with some species like wahoo, marlin, or you know, dolphin fish and things like that that you will only really interact with on you know, that top five meters. Um, but for you know, all your estuary fish uh, and also most of your uh, reef species, the biggest thing is getting to the bottom and getting using the most of your camo, or if you're not using a camo suit, getting into the reef and becoming one of the reef. That way you, you don't look as much like a um, pretty much death from above. You won't seem like a big um, predator species like a shark. So for me, once you're on the bottom, a big thing that I really like to do is to sink straight down to the reef, you know, hold on to a piece of reef so you're not getting jiggled around, especially if you're chasing species like, you know, mulloway up in the shallows or up in the, the whitewash. You know, you've got mulloway, luderick, those kind of things that you can really have your shot even affected. You might be able to get close to the fish, but you will get um, put off with a bit of uh, jiggling through the water. So getting to the reef, holding bottom. Now for me, you know, when I'm, using, when I'm swimming around with the gun, I really like to hold it on the side. That way, again, it's, it's, it's in close. My, uh, my, you know, my profile doesn't look as big, whereas if I've got my gun out in front of me like this. So, you know, that can, even though this is a short one meter gun, it does make my profile look a lot bigger. So I swim around like this pretty much until I've got to a position within the reef that I'm comfortable with. Um, now, at this point, you know, you should be sitting there grabbing on, you're not moving around, you should be able to relax into your dive a bit and you should start being able to scan for fish. Um, a lot of the time you will get a lot of inquisitive fish species like mangrove jack, um, even your brim, your luderick, all those fish species are quite inquisitive. So holding down low, getting an eye on a, on a potential species that you want to chase. From there, you know, I might leave my gun out on the reef in front of me and I might have my hand on the gun 
the same thing again, I'm leaving it in the reef. That way, that fish or that species and you know, fish even behind me can't see that my profile is you know, now an extra meter closer to them. Um, you really want to leave that as a little bit of a buffer at the end of the day. If you have a species coming straight in at you, at this point, I really like to hold the reef. At that point, I may even lift up, push out, pull the trigger. Um, yeah, I really find that bringing that, uh, bring that profile in really nice and, and small um, can really make sure that those inquisitive species come even closer. Uh, at the end of the day, the closer the fish, the easier it is for your shot. Uh, the better your shot, the more chance you are of staying in that fish and you know, making a sustainable kill. So guys, to summarize quickly on that, what we really want to do is make sure we are as quiet as possible while we're on the surface, while we're actually you know, in between dives breathing up, nice and relaxed, really quiet, and then when it comes to you know, your dive, we want to have a really nice quiet duck dive, focus on getting to the bottom, uh, especially when you're chasing reef species. Getting down to that reef, trying to make sure that your profile is small as possible, keeping that gun in nice and close, waiting for you know, whatever species you've chosen that you want to shoot, waiting for that species to you know, turn, become a bit more inquisitive, and come in directly to you. If you see them starting to come, they're gonna keep coming, keep coming. And I find at that point, that's when we wanna bring, lift up your gun, push out towards them and take that shot. Now the shot we're always looking at taking is just back into what I would call the shoulder. So you've got pretty much your eye of your fish running back to a lateral line, or typically on the species. And also what I usually try and line up is on the actual cheek plate. Uh, so you'll see it on the, on the side of that fish. It'll line up pretty much perfectly with that lateral line. If we go for that, we're gonna have a, a pretty pretty good holding shot and with a lot more potential of stoning that fish. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. You can check out more content on our YouTube channel. Visit one of our stores and shop online at www.spearfishing.com.au.